Hey everyone. Hi. Um, thanks for joining this session on not uh, Marcus's one on HTTP3. <laughs> we are going to be attacking the problem a layer down here, uh, talking more specifically about Quick and how we implemented a Quick stack in uh, VPP, the vector packet processor. So I'm Alois, I'm here with Nathan. Uh, we are both from Cisco. And uh, Nathan will now start uh, introducing Quick. Right. Okay. Uh, so first, what is Quick? Um, I'm not sure everybody's familiar with it. So it's uh, we've been dealing with UDP and uh, TCP for a while, and uh, Quick is supposed to be the the successor of TCP. Some might call it uh, TCP2, but uh, not uh, every, everyone does agree. Um, <coughs> but uh, more seriously, how does it play uh, with the uh, with the stack that we have for now? Um, so We've been having uh, HTTP living on top of uh, TLS, when it's HTTPS, TCP, and the AP layer, uh, or UDP. And the, the idea of a new protocol is to replace uh, the TCP plus TLS layer by a new layer called Quick, which is going to be um, hopefully coded in uh, user space. And, uh, and, uh, and have some nice feature. The purpose of it is also to switch from HTTP 1, 2 to HTTP 3 to introduce new feature to address a few of the concerns that uh, we had with HTTP. Uh, so some nice properties it uh, should, it has, uh, is that it provides encryption by default, uh, retaking the TLS 1.3 handshake. Uh, it's designed so that it prevents ossification in the network, so most of the packet, pretty much every, every bit of it is, enc is encrypted and encoded, so that the middle boxes cannot uh, take decisions on the packet path and do things with it. Uh, there is built-in multiplexing uh, because it's a very common application requirement and that's some issue that, uh, that we had with HTTP. Uh, it provides independent streams in, in each connection to, to address this multiplexing. Uh, uh, addresses head of line blocking, that was an issue with HTTP 1 that was supposed to uh, be um, addressed by HTTP 2. Uh, and supports some kind of uh, stream prioritization. So basically, it, uh, it uh, adds a bunch of new feature to the uh, to the old uh, transport layer. Also, a very nice thing is that it supports mobility. So when you establish a connection between uh, uh, five two peers and a five tuple, uh, you get a connection ID that you that you are then able to move across uh, across um, IPs and ports. Uh, and that should be uh, fairly seamless for the application. Um, so just to recap how things work, uh, when a server and client uh, want to talk, they can open connections. And in every connection, they can open uh, different streams. And each stream should be fairly independent from each other. Uh, to recap a bit pros and cons, so um, the cool thing about it is that it runs on UDP. Uh, so it can be implemented out of the kernel and can evolve quite um, quite fast, which is a nice thing because it's not yet an IETF standard, which gets into cons. Uh, it, again, it addresses head of line blocking, provides mobility, and provides encryption by default, which is uh, which is nice when uh, we try to move to HTTPS. But on the, the con side, it has some complexity that we've tried to address uh, by implementing it. And for now, we don't have a very standardized northbound API, uh, something that we want to address in this talk. So, so let's now take a closer look at the code. Um, the building blocks that we, we had for this project, we basically need um, something that a client application can consume. It provides an API that's hopefully familiar and easy to use. Uh, we need something that, get, that can send and receive packets, UDP packets, preferably. And we need a quick implementation. We are not re-implementing quick in this project. We will be using a, a library that does that. Um, so what we chose, so for the quick implementation, we used uh, Quickly, which is developed by Fastly, uh, which makes very few assumptions about how the memory is managed. Uh, where the packets come from, and um, is very modular. So this was um, very pleasant to use. Uh, for the packet processing, we use FDIO VPP, uh, which is uh, the project we are working on at Cisco, uh, which comes with fast layer 234 networking and a pluggable session system, and also a client library that expose uh, the session layer uh, for applications. 
So uh, not all of you may know what VPP is, so very quickly, um, it's an open source, uh, fast user space networking data plane. It's very much focused on performance. Um, it uses vector instructions. Um, we are very careful about cache efficiency in VPP. It is extensible. Uh, you can relatively simply write plugins for VPP. It comes with all you would expect from a software data plane, layer two, layer three, tunneling protocols, etc. And more importantly for today, uh, what we call the host stack, which is a layer four protocols implementation. So this is going to be our platform for uh, for the quick stack. Um, so more precisely, the VPP host stack uh, is a generic session layer that exposes layer four protocols. Um, the API is socket-like, meaning that it tries to reproduce it, to reproduce the Berkeley sockets API, just to make it easier to consume for external applications. Um, even though the internal API is more efficient, in particular, it doesn't involve uh, required copies to pass data around. Um, instead, we are using FIFOs, um, where applications can write data and the protocols can consume them, uh, consume it, and invertly. Um, so it does have an internal API that you can consume in plugins. Uh, the external API is exposed through a message queue, uh, but it's very much the same API, and it's designed for high performance. So we can almost saturate a 40 gig link with one TCP flow, almost because uh, congestion control is hard, and we can fully saturate a 40 gig link with one UDP flow. And it's built to scale linearly with number of threads, so Different sessions are always assigned to a thread, um, and they are completely independent from each other. Uh, so for a more visual overview of the host stack, uh, we see the, the session layer in the middle here, uh, which exposes a standardized API over layer four protocols, the specific protocol implementation below it, uh, and then a layer two and three networking, which we won't focus on too much today. And this session layer is consumable either internally with uh, plugins that live inside the VPP process or externally with control events going through the, the uh, message queue. Control events which include connection events like um, new connection, connection closed, data available on one of the FIFOs, etc., etc. Um, so now for uh, what are the requirements for an application that uses Quick? Uh, as Nathan said, Quick is a bit more complicated than your regular layer 4 protocol because it includes multiplexing. So that means that we have a new type of object that we don't really have in traditional uh, in a traditional socket API, which is a connections. Um, so a Quick app needs to manage listeners, connections, which are basically uh, just shells for streams and which take care of encryption and streams themselves where we can send and receive data. So one of the first challenges we had is that we needed to integrate into a, a socket-like API. And uh, that didn't really fully map to Quick, uh, not entirely. So what we did was, um, first for the listener, nothing changes. You just listen on the UDP port. and that's really what you always do. Now, things get trickier when you connect. When the client connects, it will connect to an endpoint IP port, um, and it will receive a new connection, it, a connection object, conceptually. Uh, the server will accept that connection and also receive a connection object. Uh, and with that connection object, clients can know, well, both the client and the server can now open streams. Um, so, for the, in order to open a stream, we modified a bit the connect call to be able to pass a reference to a connection. And uh, both the client and the server also need to accept streams on the client. So like you would accept on a listener, you can accept on a connection. This is a, this is a bit weird, um, but we think this allows to, um, to closely map the quick concepts to what you would expect from a, from a socket API. So the connection sockets are only used to manage streams, accept and connect them. They cannot send and receive data. For that, you need actual streams. 
Streams can also be unidirectional or bidirectional on Quick, uh, meaning that um, you won't be able to send data on certain streams you accept, because unidirectional streams are always opened by the peer who sends data on them, uh, but this doesn't uh, change as much. So once you have a stream, you can just call send and receive on the, on the stream. Uh, so no, back to Nathan for how we actually build that in GPP. Yeah. So now that we have the the structure and the uh, and the sockets that we want to expose, <coughs> the idea is to leverage GPP because that's uh, that's the, the project we work in uh, to to add this quick stack. So coming back to this session layer that lives on top of UDP that we're going to use, the first thing that we that we did is actually build a second layer. Uh, so we replicate that session layer uh, and add a quick protocol on top of, uh, of uh, the UDP and session layer. So basically, we, we build a plugin inside of VPP that acts as, a, um, as an internal application and that consumes uh, the session layer as would a normal uh, UDP listener do. And then those sessions can be exposed to an external application through the message queue and control events. So we replicate the FIFOs, we replicate the data structure, but it's for it's at first for the sake of um, of easiness and pluggability inside the uh, inside the VP. Uh, zooming a bit in inside uh, this quick break, uh, what we are gonna play with is a northbound interface that are gonna need to take from the buffers the FIFOs that are exposed to the uh, to the client application, uh, pass this data, this stream data to to the Quickly library from Fastly that we are using internally. Uh, the Pico CLS um, break inside of it is the um, the crypto backend. So as uh, as we mentioned earlier, quickly it's very nice because it exposes a lot of callbacks uh, and uh, pluggable interfaces uh, that allows to modify and change things. So that the crypto API we're going to talk about la uh, later, and then it provides also callbacks softbound to uh, copies the encrypted buffer to the uh, UDP sessions, UDP buffers in VPP that are then forwarded to to uh, the wire. Uh, this model is quite interesting because it provides three different consum cons no, consumption models from, an, uh, from a client application. Uh, you either can write an external app uh, that's independent using the socket API we, we described. You can also write an internal app uh, because VPP provides a, a large range of plugins uh, that integrates directly with the, um, with the internal API uh, provided as uh, standard C functions inside of, uh, of the code base but you can also integrate directly with the interface provided by Quickly. So that allows us to be very modular and to, um, to adapt to different use cases. Uh, for example, if you want to build, uh, let's say, uh, a forwarder or a VPN, uh, a VPN uh, termination point, you can, you're going to maybe write an internal application that's just going to do the forwarding and the mapping between, uh, uh, let's say, TCP and Quick. But if you want to uh, adapt uh, hyperf to use uh, a fake type of quick you're gonna maybe stick uh, with the external uh, with an external application external application going with regular sockets so like the, the, those sockets we defined but you can also adapt if you have an application using the quickly library uh, uh, using directly those callbacks uh, now if we follow uh, a packet coming in uh, what's going to happen to to dive a bit more inside the uh, the architecture? Uh, what happens is that um, the packet gets copied from the wire gets copied inside the um, the UDP buffer RX five four. Uh, it triggers a session event that gets called by uh, by or by quick. Uh, then the packet is initially decoded because of the because 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 of the ossification everything is encrypted. Then we match it against a connection, match it against a stream. Uh, we decrypt the packets, uh, we do the, the crypto, um, crypto processing, and then delivers it, deliver it either to, uh, directly to Quickly or to uh, the quick stream buffer that's going to act as uh, the uh, application buffer. And then this, uh, this decrypted payload can be consumed either by an internal client or an external client via the message queue. So this brings a couple of issues. Um, what happens if, uh, as those FIFOs are fixed size, uh, what happens if we exceed the amount of data we are able to, to store? So that doesn't matter that much on the UDP, uh, UDP session part because that buffer is merely, merely temporarily. We don't really store data there. It's just to pass 
data from the wire to the, the packet decoding node. But that, uh, that stream, uh, stream FIFO, can make things break. Um, and that's due to the nature of the quick protocol. The, the issue is that uh, before the packet is encrypted, we have no way to know which streams is going to contain data for. Um, in quick, uh, data can be coalesced between packets and all, can also control, c control frames. So, and everything is encrypted to prevent ossifications. And once the packet is encrypted, quickly the library does not allow us to drop the packet because you would have to drop, to revert all the control frame that you processed earlier. So if you drop, if you drop the data, the, uh, the data will never be retransmitted, which is quite sad for congestion, for uh, uh, that, that type of protocol. But fortunately, we have a connection parameter called max stream data that limits, uh, that uh, communicates between the peers the maximum amount of data that you can uh, send an act on a, on a stream that allows us to, to control that um, transaction, setting it to the maximum uh, FIFO size. Um, and so that that proves um, a bit the maturity of Quick uh, because it has uh, several other connection level settings in that sense to control the, the maximum number of streams, the maximum number of unidirectional streams, and the total amount of unact data for the connection. Uh, that allows us to handle those kinds of tricky cases that the implementation uh, uh, sets on the way. So after Oryx, then we want to, after having received the packets, we now want a TX1. And so you probably noticed the TX pass is really similar to the Rx pass. It's just the same graph, but in the opposite direction, basically. So the data can come either from external apps or internal apps, in which case it will be pushed into the quick stream session TX50. Um, which will trigger an event which will uh, call quickly, or it can come from a uh, quickly app using directly quickly and um, qui well telling it to generate new packets and send uh, the data. Um, so just one thing to note here is that um, the, the FIFOs are by stream, but quickly generates packets for the entire connection. Um, so you may have data pushed from different streams, uh, you just need to call quickly once to generate packets for the entire connection uh, because quickly will just well it will call its internal scheduler to select data from the different streams according to their priority etc etc and generate packets from them encrypt them put them into the UDP session TX54 where they will be sent on their way by VPP um, there are also a couple issues on the TX pass that we need to take care of uh, in particular, uh, the back pressure, so how we make sure we don't uh, encrypt packets that we actually don't have space for in the UDP TX FIFO to send them, which would be a bit sad, a big waste of cycles, or how the apps know that they need to uh, wait before sending more data. So fortunately, um, on, the, on the lower side, it's pretty simple for UDP because uh, when we tell quickly to send packets, we can actually tell it to send a certain amount of packets. And based on the available space in, space in the UDP FIFO and the MTU, we can just limit uh, the amount of packets generated to make sure they always fit. Um, and then from the application side, the back pressure just goes comes from the FIFOs, uh, where uh, quickly we'll stop taking data from the stream FIFOs. Uh, and the applications need to check the space available in the FIFOs and they will see that they are, don't have space left uh, to send data and they will naturally stop sending data. Uh, another question is also uh, when the applications can know that uh, quickly has sent more packets and they are not able to send more data, um, there is a host tag feature to actually trigger notifications to an application uh, when space becomes available in, in one of its FIFOs. So that works pretty well. Uh, another important thing that we have only touched a bit for now is the threading model. Um, so first, generally VPP runs either with one thread or one main thread plus several worker threads. And as we said earlier, um, sessions are always pinned to one thread, one specific uh, thread. Um, the thing is, we don't get to choose which thread uh, the session gets pinned on. That depends on RSS. 
uh, meaning that uh, Nick will receive a packet. Um, it will assign it to a queue depending on its five tuple hash, and VPP will get it on the specific thread which manages that queue. Uh, that's a bit of a problem for UDP because when we open a connection, we'll first send a packet in one thread, uh, and the reply may come to another thread. Uh, we, we can't know in advance. Um, so in order to handle that, the host stack has a session migration concept uh, where the application managing UDP connections, so in that case the quick protocol implementation, uh, will get notification when the migration happens and can handle things correctly. Uh, for now, the quick sessions are opened only when the quick handshake completes, which means that packets have been exchanged in both directions and uh, so this, the uh, UDP session is already pinned on the right thread and we just open the quick session on the same thread and that works fine as long as there are no mobility events because mobility events change the five tuple so they can result in um, the connection conceptually migrating to a, a new thread. This will result, well this will basically be a new UDP session for VPP which we'll need to match to an existing quick connection. That's not yet supported that uh, Will be soon, though. <laughs> uh, and then just a note on quick streams the stream sessions will always be placed on the thread in which their connection lives. But now, the important questions. Yes, uh, how quick is it? Um, so, we did some benchmark, obviously, to, to see how well we were performing. Uh, and the issue is that for now, we, there is no canonical quick uh, performance assessment tool. There are a bunch of, um, of tools. Uh, uh, being developed, but there is no 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 kind of one. So what we did is develop a custom hyperflight uh, client and server tool that uh, that consumes the VPP uh, message queue through shared memory, so attached to to the application. And the basic setup is uh, the client opens n connections. On each of those connections, it opens n streams um, and then sends a certain amount of bytes on each and every one of those streams. And once the, the data has been received, a, a closed notification is sent back on the streams and uh, when and everything is closed in a connection, a closed connection event is sent uh, and everything should, uh, should uh, turn down nicely. So uh, that allows us to test uh, correction but also uh, speed. Uh, the setup we've been playing with uh, consists of two different VM, uh, two different machines uh, connected back to back with a 40 gig link, uh, XL710. Uh, in each one, there is a VPP running uh, and the uh, the test application uh, attached to it. So we do pin the calls, uh, run VPP and the test app on the same NUMA, and use uh, 15 uh, 15k bytes uh, MTU. Those are um, 3.2 gigs uh, CPUs and the first results we're getting is that for one worker so that was the, the, f the first benchmark we did for 10 connection and 10 stream on each so 100 streams we're getting uh, approximately 3.5 gigabit per second for one worker uh, we're seeing that this scales quite linearly with the number of workers in queues uh, so we're getting up to 14 gigabits per second on four workers we didn't do much more exploration there um, but we're seeing uh, some type of scaling. Uh, we did some testing with uh, growing up to 100k streams per core, uh, vari uh, doing variations in the terms of connection streams, streams per connection. Uh, and the handshake rate is about uh, 1,500 connections per second, limited by the, the message queue and the connect, uh, the connect uh, interface mostly. Uh, but that wasn't uh, very satisfying at first. We say we say to ourselves, "Oh, we maybe we could improve that," um, and and, be, and that because there there were a bunch of uh, of issues and things that we we could uh, we could improve in our implementation. Uh, at first, uh, quickly uses internally a lib called PicoTLS, which is also developed by the by the same team at Fastly, uh, to do the TLS handshake and the packet encryption and decryption, and. Um, as the API for this is pluggable, and as VPP has uh, no support, support now a native crypto API, uh, we we try to use the uh, the VPP crypto, crypto API inside of Quickly in order to yield better results. Uh, and we also try to to do some batching of the crypto operations uh, in order to to improve speed. That that proved uh, proved to be working a bit. 
so basically, well, what we do is uh, instead of receiving one packet, decrypting it, uh, and forwarding it, we do stack n packets, uh, decrypt them at the same time, and then pass them to the protocol processing uh, right, uh, linearly. So basically, the, the same idea as VPP is doing, the V in VPP stands for vector, uh, vector packet processing, and we, we basically build vectors inside of, uh, of, this, of this session layer. Uh, and we apply the same uh, ID to the to the TX path, uh, and that proved also to to improve performance. Uh, and the last thing that we've been working on is the congestion control. The default one is Reno, which isn't really playing well with high throughput. We tweaked it a bit by changing the the beta factor um, because we didn't have time to to implement uh, newer ones. But fortunately, it's also pluggable, so we we can will be able to uh, to extend it uh, in the future. And the results we're getting with this is um, an improvement of thirty uh, percent, approximately, going up to four point five gigabit per second on one worker with the batching and the native crypto. And we're seeing that most of the cycles are spent in the in the CPU doing uh, in the, in the crypto path. Um, and we hope that we'll, we'll accelerate with, uh, with newer instruction in Intel, to Intel Ice Lake CPUs. Yes. Um, so to the, to the future. Yeah, so what's next? Um, of course, as you've seen, this is still a work in progress. Uh, there's still some work to do on performance optimization. Um, one thing we want to work on is uh, hardware offloads because the um, crypto batching that uh, Nathan just mentioned um, actually uses the quickly offload API, uh, meaning that um, we process it. We can pr well currently we process it with VPP's crypto API in batches, but um, it would be also possible to send the packets to um, a, a crypto card for further processing and to free CPU resources. Uh, we want support mobility. We'll have continuous performance benchmarking available soon publicly on the, the CSIT platform, which is the generic uh, VPP continuous performance benchmarking. Um, and of course, all of this is open source. So if you want to try it out or get involved, feel free to, to check out the code. Um, the use cases for this quick stack now, because we, we don't do this just for fun, although it is fun. Uh, are of course HTTP3 servers, probably the most common use case for Quick, uh, but also gRPC over Quick. Um, gRPC can optionally use uh, Quick Transport, and it's really well suited because of the built-in multiplexing. Uh, and there are also more network-oriented use cases like uh, Quick VPNs, which uh, is similar to SSL VPN but better because it supports mobility. And using one stream per flow allows to get rid of the head of line blocking in case of, in case of packet loss. Uh, in an SSL VPN. And also it's not harder to deploy because you just need a, a certificate for your server and an authentication mechanism for your clients. Um, a funny trick we were experimenting with for the quick VPNs was to uh, transparently terminate the TCP connections at the VPN gateway, meaning that the VPN gateway will actually hijack the connection and only send the TCP payloads, the TCP data stream, into the quick stream instead of encapsulating the entire packet. Um, this has a nice property of getting rid of the nested congestion control issues, uh, but we are getting also into a dangerous middle box territory here. Um, no further the main takeaways of this project. So first, we really want to thank the Quickly guys because we had a great experience with their library. Um, it proved to be easy to use, pluggable, very, very flexible. So I highly recommend it if you want to play with Quick. Mm -hmm. um, we also now have um, an easy to use socket-like API for Quick and VPP. And uh, the VPP host tag proved to be extensible enough for new protocols which don't have really the same concepts as the existing ones, uh, which was nice. And um, using the, the, the VPP framework also gave, allowed us to quite easily get a good performance boost for Quick. So we got a 30% performance improvement just by using the native crypto and the vector processing concept to our Quick implementation. But of course, there's still a bit more work required there to reach max level of performance. We are a bit slower than TLS can be yet, uh, but we hope we can reach similar levels of performance in the future. 
Thank you very much for listening. You have any questions? So the question was whether there are other libraries similar to Quickly. Uh, yes, there are quite a few uh, quick implementations uh, open source on GitHub. Um, there is in, in particular ngtcp2, which is the nginx implementation. There is a Chromium implementation, which is implementing uh, Google Quick, which is a slightly different protocol from the ITF Quick, uh, which is currently being standardized. Um, there are quite a few others. But we found out that most of them either were not implemented in, uh, in just C, which was a problem for an integration with VPP, or made some assumptions about what the network looked like, how, the, how they gathered packets and everything. So that's why we, we chose quickly. So the question was how Quick VPN compares with WireGuard. I am not familiar enough with WireGuard to answer that question, I'm afraid. No. Do, do you want to, so do you know, well, do you want to specify what WireGuard is, or? Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so, yeah. so you said you, uh, most of the time, uh, CPU time is spent in the crypto code. Yes. So what is uh, the added value that uh, VPP brings? Right. So the question was um, that given that uh, most of the time is spent in the crypto code, uh, what is the the performance benefit gain from using VPP? Um, so it's it's quite simple actually. VPP has a really really efficient crypto API, uh, which compared to the default uh, Pico TLS OpenSSL layers. Uh, gave us a big performance boost by minimizing copies, um, increasing the batching abilities, increasing cache efficiency, and everything. So that's, that's mostly it. So the performance gain is only due to the crypto optimization, or mostly? Uh, mostly, yes. Also as well to the, um, the stack, which is a bit faster in GPP than in Linux, but mostly. Yes. Does Quick have any concept like Linux TCP small queues because you've got a lot of data all the way between the application and the network card and you can build up huge latencies and having an end to end uh, uh, you know end to end in, in the stack uh, rate control would really help great point <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's up to us to, well sorry so for um, the viewers on the on the camera the question was whether uh, Quick has a concept similar to the kernel small queues to limit end-to-end -end latency. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it would be up to us to implement that now. <laughs> but that's a great point. Sure. Well, nice, no. I, unless you measure latency, everybody tends to measure bandwidth and get mm -hmm. right. numbers and then they get the buffer bloat. Yeah, yeah. so in order to limit buffer bloat, we need to limit, uh, to explicitly limit uh, the FIFO sizes or the size used in the FIFOs at least. Mm -hmm. But yes, thank you. Uh, yes? On which card did you try your, your, your measurement? Because where I do this, you, I, I'm, I'm aware of a number of vendors which provides hardware of low TLS and hardware of, of low crypto engine inside the NX. So I assume if you will use these cards, you will get uh, better performance. Yes, so the question was whether, uh, which cards we used for the testing and whether we used cards that had physical, well, uh, offload properties for Quick. Um, we used uh, Intel XL 710 cards for the test. Uh, we didn't, we know that these cards have some offload properties, we didn't use any. Uh, we focused only on software processing. Um, Offloading is, a, is an interesting topic. There are some offloads that are possible inside the card or um, with dedicated devices uh, further in the processing pipeline, meaning once a packet has been received, we can also offload the crypto, for instance. Uh, both the inline offload where the card does the processing and then passes the pre-processed packet to the stack and the what we would call out-of-band offload, um, where we do some processing in software, then send the packets back to a card for crypto uh, which is uh, the main point. So both these models exist, both are interesting. Um, we think the out-of-band is more flexible and easier to use, uh, but the in-band may provide better performance. 
I just one last question. So you mentioned that you could only use the uh, libraries which were written in C because you had to compile them but the same way VPP is compiled, right? So is that true? Or did I hear it correctly? Well, <laughs> we, we, we say that. But it, was, it was not... Uh, so the, the question was... Uh, did we choose uh, uh, quickly because it uh, it was in C and that we needed that for compatible with VP, if I understood correctly? And the answer is um, it was a part of the criteria. It was not the, the main one, but easiness of compilation and interaction between VPP and quickly was uh, was a concern because of um, of easiness of coding. The uh it's not a hard requirement, but it makes lots of things simpler. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> you can.